Ladies and gentlemen, this is section 5.2 talking about using perpendicular bisectors, which the first part of this was the activity we constructed in class. So when we constructed a perpendicular bisector, you should have noticed several things. The first two being obvious because of the name. Perpendicular bisector. So if this is our perpendicular bisector of line segment AB, since it's perpendicular, it forms a right angle with segment AB. And since it's a bisector, we know that it divides it into two congruent halves. What the theorem also concludes is that any point on our perpendicular bisector, like this point right here, C, is going to be equidistant, or the same distance from the endpoints of the segment. So C is the same distance to A as it is to B. And that's what our theorem states. There is a proof located here, which we are not going to run through in class because the majority or the bulk of our proof work is done for the school year. Uh, not to say you'll never have to explain anything or perhaps occasionally write a proof here or there, especially when we're reviewing for finals. The converse of this is also true, is if you have a point, like this point D down here, that is equidistant from the endpoints, then we can conclude it's going to lie on the perpendicular bisector. So if I were to extend this, I don't have to assume that D would be on it. I can say with uh, some measure of certainty that it will lie on it because it's equidistant from the two endpoints. So the converse also is true as well for the perpendicular bisector theorem. But let's use this to answer a couple of questions. In this diagram, we know that line WX is the perpendicular bisector of YZ, which means it forms a right angle, and we have two congruent halves here. So for part A, what segment lengths in the diagram are equal? Well, first of all, since this is the perpendicular bisector, we know the length of YX is equal to the length of ZX. Because it passes through the midpoint, so those two halves are going to be equal. We're also given in the picture that YV is equal to ZV in length, because they're both 25. And finally, since W lies on the perpendicular bisector, it's equidistant from points Y and Z. So WY, the length of it, is equal to the length of WZ, because W is equidistant from our two endpoints because it lies on our perpendicular bisector. For our second part, is V on, or sorry, is point V on line WX? Well, V is up here, WX is our perpendicular bisector. We don't see it, so it's not given in the picture, but we do know, based upon the converse of our perpendicular bisector theorem, that because V is equidistant from our two endpoints, then it will lie on our perpendicular bisector, which is WX. So in this case, we can say with some certainty that yes, point V will lie on line WX. For this example, we know that BD is the perpendicular bisector of segment AC. Find the length of AD. Well, if this is our perpendicular bisector, you know we have two congruent halves, we have a right angle, and we also know that any point on it, such as D, will be equidistant from our endpoints. So that means that these two lengths are going to be equal, so the segments are congruent. So if they're equal, we can say that the 3x plus 14 is going to equal 5x. We can subtract 3x then from both sides, so that these 3x's cancel, and we have 14. And over here, 5x minus 3x is 2x. Now we can divide both sides by 2, and we can see that x is 7. However, the question does not ask us to solve for x. It asks us to solve for AD, which is 5x. We know that x is 7, so we can plug it in. AD is 35. So those are a couple uh, parts dealing with perpendicular bisectors. Another piece we need to look at is, let's say we have a triangle. And let me kind of construct one here. Let's say we have a triangle. And I'm going to construct the perpendicular bisector of each side of this triangle. Because remember, this whole unit is about relationships within triangles. So I'll construct the perpendicular bisector of each side. 
And if I can adjust this so you can see it, you can see that all three perpendicular bisectors meet at a single point right here. That point is a point of concurrency. A point of concurrency is a, is a point where three or more lines intersect. And since this is the intersection of three perpendicular bisectors, this point of concurrency is actually called your circumcenter. And your circumcenter, where your three perpendicular bisectors in your triangle, where this point is depends on what type of triangle it is. So right now it's an acute triangle, so our circumcenter is inside. If I were to turn this so it became a right triangle, so this is our right angle up here, your circumcenter is actually on the triangle. And if I were to change it even more to where it was obtuse triangle, your circumcenter would be outside. So, looking at an actual more helpful definition, possibly, we can see that the perpendicular bisectors of a triangle intersect at a point, that is your circumcenter. And if I were just to kind of spell that for you, so circum, like circumference, circumcenter. And that's equidistant from the vertices. So the distance from P to B, from P to A, from P to C, are all the same. So kind of as it is right here. I'm going to pause. You can pause this just for a minute to copy this down. And now I'm going to move into the last and final slide. But first... If I were to take uh, this triangle, and let's say I were to make my circumcenter the center of a circle. And since this is equidistant from all the vertices, I'll make this a radius. Attention, bus right. And if I make that a radius, then my circle goes from the circumcenter to the edge of my triangle. And it will actually intersect all of the points, or all the vertices that the circle has kind of trapped the triangle inside of it, and the circle is actually touching the triangle at those three points. And anywhere, if I make this a right triangle, or if I were to make this an obtuse triangle, I still have a circle that's touching all of the vertices. This special type of circle is called a circumscribed circle. It's said to be circumscribed around the triangle. So all these three examples here are circumscribed circles. Now, the prefix circum, like circumference, means around. I want to say it's from a Latin word, so to go around something. So circumference is the distance around a circle. Uh, circumstances are conditions that surround you uh, in life. Circumscribed means it's drawn around something. So scribe, think to write or to draw, and circum is around. So these are three examples when you have an acute, a right, or an obtuse triangle. And remember that here your circumcenter in an acute triangle is inside the triangle. For a right triangle, it's on the triangle. And for an obtuse triangle, it's, uh, I should write that, it's outside your triangle, your circumcenter. And then you still you can draw your circumscribed circle around it. So that concludes section 5.2 using perpendicular bisectors. I hope this was helpful. Hopefully the homework assignment is uh, a little bit easier with this video.